right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The conversation still continues even during the break. Honorable Farah Malim is here, the DAB Member of Parliament, Honorable Danson Mungatan, Senator Futana Riva, and Honorable James Nikal, Member of Parliament for SEME. We're still now segging way into the devolution, 10 years into it. Have we made any progress? But I see there's some questions coming through. Musoma JM says, Manda goes graft case is a classic example of why people who served as governor should not contest as Senator or a person who serves as president to contest as MP in the subsequent elections because they can't oversight the expenditure and they will continue to ask is there provision to recall a senator okay yeah, can well, I? I? oh no the, the the provision to recall a senator yeah. is the same like the ones for members of, of parliament but if you look at that act it is very difficult to recall uh, a sitting member of parliament or, or a, a senator, senator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you have to have done, uh, you know... Halfway through. Halfway, you know, that means two and a half years. You have to have done two and a half years. Of your time. So technically, yes. uh, as it is now, you can't you recall any member of parliament, any senator. Until two and a half years since the last election uh, is passed. Mm -hmm. And then the registered voters who participated in that election, 50% of them... Plus one. Must, plus one, must sign the petition. So tell me, who, who's going to do that? It's so difficult. But legislators did this deliberately. You <laughs> passed it deliberately. Let me tell you about that. Yes. Let me tell you about it, because none of them was in that parliament. Yeah. And I was there in the 10th parliament. Okay. So. Although, of course, Mungatana has been even before there. You were there also in yeah, the 9th yeah. parliament. We were there. Oh, we were together. I was we were together. We were together, yeah, yes. 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 Yeah. He was a very, very active uh, member. I mean, yeah. Mungatana, as usual, is always a very, very interesting person, and he does some serious job yeah. on the floor of the house. Now, we, we, we had no capacity ourselves to change anything about that. This constitution was not done by parliament. This constitution mm -hmm. was done by a committee of experts in mm Haivash. -hmm. And we had to have a two-thirds majority in parliament for us to amend a comma. Even a comma. Even a comma. Yeah. <laughs> you get my point. So we, we suggested, we, we proposed, there were 157 proposals. Yes. Amendments uh, to that. Yeah. And, and none of them saw the light of the day. None of them could even be debated on the floor of the House. Uh, because well, you, had to have, you had to have a quorum of two thirds of the plenary. Yeah. You, you see what I mean? Two thirds. At that time, we were 200. 10 plus 12 mem enumerated members of parliament, 222. Yes. Two. So you had to have uh, 140 something, I think, or 147, yes, yes. I think. I can't remember the number. I can't remember the number to, uh, to be there sitting in the house. Yeah. So whenever an, an, an amendment came, a proposal for an amendment, and if only a third of the house feels it's, it's, it's not interested and they walk out, then you can't debate that because the speaker has got to count, mm -hmm. a head, make a head count, even before the matter becomes alive on the floor of the house. Yeah. So in a sense, you could say that that constitution is, is, is well, it's a committee of experts constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, let me now uh, uh, tell you something. The, I, I, I appreciate what Mungatana has said, that there was an American president who became uh, a, a, a Supreme Court judge. To begin with, that was the one time off. In over 200, from, 90, from 1777, 76 was it? 76. Yeah. To, to date, in 250 odd years, or 60 odd years, I don't know how many there, they only did once. Yeah. And that president had served for one term, Howard Taft. Uh, Howard Taft had the, the, the singular, I, I read about him, I actually went to the University of Temple uh, many, many years back uh, oh. to go to the library and everything. No, no, not as a student, but oh, just, okay. just to go and do some bit of, uh, when I was there and I got so much interested in there and I, there was a very good professor and he says deceased. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, he was one of the top students in his, in his law class, by the way, he was the second top student in his law class. And I think he went to Yale or Harvard, I can't remember which one, mm. one of the universities, one of the top Ivy League universities. Yeah. But nonetheless, he was recalled mm -hmm. by the president that time. It was Thomas Jefferson? Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, I can't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. No, 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 sorry, it was not Thomas Jefferson. Thomas the, was uh, it was uh, Woodrow, no, no, it was uh, Theodore, Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt. Yeah. Theodore Roosevelt, you know, there were two Roosevelt's there. Uh, he recalled him, and he recalled him from, if I can remember very well, he was the president of a commission for Philippines. You know, Philippines was more or less like a colony of the US. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that they, they experimented with it and they saw the folly in that and abandoned it. Okay.
You, you see what I mean? Yeah. They abandoned it, you know, hundreds of years back. Okay. So, so what I'm trying to say myself is that I think the more we, it's good to have an institutional, what do you call, memory of the house. It's good to have in the house people who have been there much earlier, uh, who've been coming for a number of a number of significant terms, yeah. and, and people who are young, so that that what you call a generational uh, 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 passing on, on of knowledge is there, which we lack, by the way, right now. We seriously lack in the National Assembly. And, I'm, and, and uh, uh, Gatara no, will like, uh, absolutely. I mean, everybody's there. The maximum you have is somebody who's been there now for, a uh, majority of them are, are the last time and this time. Yeah. Uh, four, four, I think, are probably the highest now. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Very four, few. four are the highest, but even the four are very few. Okay. Just far too very few. few. Okay. So, so what I'm trying to say is that, uh, uh, and, and you know the last time, the last uh, parliament, there was no parliament. I mean, in the, la in the last, it was just basically acrimony between the two sides within Jubilee itself. And, and of course, the other people, uh, we, we, the, the Azimio side yeah. was with one faction of Jubilee, with the, was the Uhuru faction of Jubilee, uh, which is very small, by the way. I don't even know why <laughs> it was. But what I'm trying to say is that we need to have a break in these things. Yeah. Five years break. Or is actually a very good thing before somebody can run mm -hmm. for an office like that. But okay. that also, that or he's a lawyer. That also you have to take into consideration. Yeah, there is no statute of limitation on criminal okay. offenses. All right. So even if it's 60 years later and you stole money when you're a governor, yeah, you could you still, still be taken to court. To you. Okay. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You still, and because our public accounts committee. Uh, reports uh, slow. are always historically, slow. traditionally slow, and they take many years, yeah. sometimes more than five years. Am I right? Correct. And because of that, I think uh, uh, even five years is, 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 in my opinion, not right for a governor. You better be st stay for 10 years and come back if, okay. if you have to run for governor, for, for senator. Yeah. For senator, because you can't be the judge and the jury. You, 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 you can't be the executioner. Yeah. You did everything yourself, and then you, you're going to be oversighted by by, by an institution where you belong. Yeah. Speaking of the devolved units of Honorable, Seme, Honorable Nikal from SEME, you know there's a devolution conference ongoing right now mm -hmm. in Eldoret. Mm -hmm. Ten years down the line have we achieved much, and the president now has said in the next 60 days all the devolved functions will be transferred to the county. Is that a commendable step? Should it have been done earlier on? It's been 10 years down the line. One, uh, I think overall, Devolution has made a difference in terms of development for this country, mm -hmm. at least in terms of physical access. If I take the health sector, which I'm familiar with, there are many, many, many parts of this country which have health facilities that they never had, could not, could not have had in the old system. They have had them. There may be issues with the human resource. There may be issues with the supplies and so on. But actually, those facilities are there and they do offer <coughs> services within those limitations. So I think that, in my view, uh, is, is commendable yeah. in the 10 years. I think in the life of a nation, 10 years is not such a big time. Mm. If you are talking of other countries, we are talking of two, 200, 200 years. So if there's been a positive change in two years, then let us just look at what are the problems mm. that we have uh, encountered. Two year, ten years is actually a, an experimental period to see what is wrong and then look at them. Mm. The issue of uh, all the devolved functions going uh, at once, I'm always very worried of implementing things abruptly at once because na nature yeah. hardly ever works like that. Whenever nature works abruptly and once it often destructive. Yeah. So it's always important to look at what you have, what are the issues we are going to have if we do it. If we go back, I was completely worried okay. uh, at the beginning of, of, of the evolution because I was a permanent secretary before and we had already appreciated the, the provision of three years devolution time because then you had to work out. We had actually started working out yeah. how, you'd de how you'd devolve and transfer uh, structures in line with what the constitution, but suddenly, yeah. I think the, the council of governors at that time was extremely st strong. And I remember the president who would say, Chukweni. Mm. Now again, we don't want to say the end. Mm. What is the best say is what functions are still not fully devolved. Why 
have they delayed this this long mm. and what is required yeah. because there there are structures right now i know that actually still need to be be looked at if we are looking at human resource uh, if we take area of health mm -hmm. for example but i think it, it applies everywhere you have so many cadres their progression their terms of service yeah. you, you you really have to look at how do you do this when you are dealing with 47 governments mm -hmm. and the the Kenyans know they are Kenyans. Wherever they are working, they won't feel they are working the same. They would even like to feel that they can move and work from this place. Okay. Now, you, you, then look at, you, you then look at now, what do we need to do? I would be very uh, un uncomfortable yeah. if it is all done suddenly. Yeah, now, there are some structures that... Days. He says in 60 days, the functions should go. Let me ask, you know, sure. you know let me tell you, Maybe I've been, I was in the civil so long. I don't know, but maybe the president sat somewhere with some people and actually worked out the 60 days and looked at all these areas yeah. and what are the issues and why do he do it? And they said this thing can be done in 60 days. But There's a great practice. danger. Yeah. There's a great danger that when people are dealing with the powerful leader, they, they, they pick figures from the air and it looks good and then the 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 the, 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 the whether it's a president or a yeah. minister in a ministry and then they say the without having look at the practical terms yeah. what determines those 60 days why not 59 okay <laughs> why not 59 days <laughs> yeah. and why not 61 okay. and i'll tell you for one thing and it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a senator is here yeah but let me just say one thing that we should even look at in our <laughs> in our constitution in, in reference to devolution mm. uh, the structure of council of governors the secretariat to the council of governors mm -hmm. and the intergovernmental uh, relations technical committee strictly in law i'm not a lawyer but dear and this more than you it is the intergovernmental relations technical committee that should be the secretariat the secretariat for the council of governors mm -hmm. but right now there are two structures existing, mm -hmm. and I get the feeling that something needs to be done about it. Okay. One was administratively put in place yeah. and has matured, mm -hmm. and the other one is the legal one, and it is the true connection yeah. in terms of intergovernmental relations. Okay. The other one, let me just say this, because I, I, I really want him to get this, because mm -hmm. he, he has the capacity yeah. to even look at it. When we look at the budget process, yeah. There's a, there's, some, there's, a, there's a stage we call uh, the budget policy statement. Mm -hmm. when, this, when this is done, on the part of the national government, it comes with a fair amount of detail, a lot of detail of why the national government needs money for this and that and that and details. On the part of the counties, mm -hmm. the only issue that comes at that point is the 15% constitutional regulation yeah. and uh, a recommendation of the Commission for Revenue Allocation. And I've never really had the Commission for Revenue Allocation every year going into detail mm. to know what the counties need. Okay. So on that basis, we then divide the money into two. Yeah. It is my view that the, the counties actually getting a role. There should be a process whereby that time we have a fair amount of detail Mm -hmm. and collated yeah. so that health, all counties, is this. Okay. Water, all counties, is this. Yeah. So that when in parliament, when in national assembly, yeah. when we are doing it, we know the needs of each. Okay. So with those, senator, yeah. with those, uh, as so a finish, yeah. we shouldn't just say we are going to do it immediately, look at the, the, the details. The yeah. devil is in the... In the detail. Yes. And Senator Mugatana, are we facing a possible crisis here? Because if he pulls off the 60 days, the functions come to the counties. Mm. Where's the budget for it? It wasn't planned for. <laughs> so will then we will we have a situation where the functions are now with you, but you don't have the money. And then now, how do you readjust the budget? Because it wasn't planned for in advance. Yeah, the, 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 there's definitely a discussion that needs to be done at a technical level. Yeah. Uh, because what the president is executing is a political promise. Uh, we said during the campaigns that we are going to support counties yeah. and we are going to make sure that counties get their full powers, their full authority. We said that. 
And what the president has been doing is counting on some of the deliverables that he has been doing. Mm. Uh, we promised this, we delivered. We promised this, we delivered. Uh, on this one, uh, I, I, and I think he, he must have uh, gone through the, the whole process uh, of thinking through it because I heard him in the statement when he was talking that the, the money must follow the functions. Yeah. But then the question, as you are saying, is uh, how, how do we readjust the, the budget? Yeah. Uh, because the equitable share is 15 percent, yeah, that's supposed to go to the county government. The, there's a constitutional question around, uh, around that, that issue. And uh, we could do it administratively and even justify it, but we, we, we will have to do a supplementary budget as well mm. that will take care of now the details. That's why I'm thinking uh, that interrelation, intergovernmental relations that uh, Honorable uh, Nikal is talking about is, is critical because they have been on it from the time we said devolution should start. Yeah. And they, they have known, what, they have had a lot of challenges, of course. Yeah. Uh, but as opposed to that secretariat, there's the Council of Governors. The COG, by the way, is not anchored in law. Mm -hmm. It is just uh, what the governors have formed, and they have been asking us at the Senate to, to, to make it a, a law yeah. so that they, they, they have their own body as, as a as It's a also still an amorphous body. Yeah, it's still not an amorphous. It's not yet anchored in law. Okay. And it's a discussion we are having. But where, what do we do with, uh, with this interrelation, inter intergovernmental relations uh, committee that has been set up and it is actually functional? So I think it's, the intention is good. Yeah. It's a very good intention and uh, we need to go that direction mm -hmm. for counties to have full powers. But we also need to, to, to look at the mechanics so that uh, you don't put too much uh, food mm -hmm. Yeah. in the mouth, because then it brings other <laughs> problems. But is, is the president getting into a situation where he gives uh, no, non-practical timelines? Because if you say 60 days, can you present a supplementary budget within that 60 days and transfer all the functions within that 60 the, the, days? Because <laughs> the functions are going to cost approximately 292 billion. You're right. So what, what, what I'm saying is that uh, he's a very intelligent man with a good number of uh, uh, advisors. He doesn't speak just like that. He's the president. He speaks when he's informed. Yeah. So I'm saying there is a there's a back office that yeah. must actually sit down to make sure that the mechanics actually happen. Okay. And on the political side, yeah, it, it's a good thing to actually cause this devolve to happen. So we we must push towards that direction. Remember, we used to have county councils and they were useless. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we came to district focus for rural development during Moy's time, it didn't work. And then we brought CDF because members of parliament decided let, even in this centralized system of government, let's have CDF. CDF has, has continued to, to expand its space and it has done something. Then we anchored in the constitution, the county governments. Now, these county governments, to me, Mm -hmm. should be the future of this nation. Okay. So I wholly support what the president says. That intention is good. Yeah. The mechanics, I think we need to get the, the, the technical people okay. to move in that direction as much as can be done All right. within those 60 days. Honorable Malim, what are your thoughts on this? Is it impractical, 60 days to transfer all the function to the government? Uh, the, the, Something that hasn't been done for the last 10 years. The operational operational, successful transfer, in my opinion, 60 days is just too little. Mm. Mm. And, um, but, but, but technically, they could say, okay, fine, those services are, uh, are, are transferred. Yeah. But then, of course, we have a transition period. Mm. And, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Period doing time. it and not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So basically, you're doing it and you're not doing it. Yeah. The transition yeah. period will definitely have to kick in. Yeah. Now, let me, let me now tell you something else here. What is the default function? Mm. What is the default function? But we have, we have the Ministry of Water, which has one of the biggest budgets here. And it's such an essential you know, aspect of the lives of Kenyans. Yeah. We still can get clean water. 
for every Kenyan. Now, you, you then transfer those services. Presumption is that the Ministry of uh, Water will only be there for regulatory purposes. Mm -hmm. And the Ministry of Water itself is, is not uh, uh, capacitated enough for it to run the entire water uh, sector in this country. There are authorities. Yeah. There is the TADA, there is the uh, Wasiro North, there is the Wasiro, you know, all those, those, all those. Lake Victoria South, Lake, Lake Victoria, Victoria North, South, the other North, North, and all those ones uh, who, who also implement, but then on behalf of the central government, they don't implement on behalf of the county government. government. So if you say we're transferring uh, water, yeah. so then where do you start and where do you end? I mean, you just, it's, just, it's just something that you can't do it even in the next 10 years, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, look at health. Yeah. Health is, 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 is devolved function. But what have the county governments done? It's a total mess. They've messed up. Total, absolute, utter mess. Actually, as a stopgap to save lives, I would suggest that we take back this to central government as much as possible. Because for the first time in our history, when the doctor to patient ratio is what? How many? No, I don't have the figure. It is thousands. The doctor to patient ratio. Mm -hmm. We have doctors who don't have jobs in the country. 4,000 doctors can, can access jobs. About 4,000. 4,000 doctors. The first time in our history, the first time you hear in any third world country, yeah. any developing third world country in my opinion, the one thing that you should be sure of always is if you're trained as a teacher or if you're trained as a doctor, you get a job. Yeah. We don't have jobs for our teachers right now. Not because we don't need them, not because we don't have the resources to employ them and pay their salaries, but because county governments are den of dens of corruptions. It's, it's a total mess. It's an absolute mess. If they could get, do away with all the employees in, the, in that place and, and just have these billions of shillings for them to share out at the end of the year, they would be very happy. And I can tell you, I'm telling you that. And then you see what is happening is that because you need the governors to run for the presidency, yeah. they have resources. No, no one who wants to run for the presidency would, would risk uh, mm. having a bad relationship with the governors. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because they have the resources in their hands. Yeah. Most of them are not even that well educated. Many of them just got their fake degrees in places <laughs> and ended up becoming governors. Yeah, this is the reality of the matter. The reality of the matter. And I had, I said myself way back, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a known drug dealer, big, big drug, you know, uh, Don, Godfather, <laughs> would run for the presidency of this country and win it at some stage. Because, I mean, you look at our scenario here. Who are the people who are the role models for the children when they look at them in the TV and everywhere? Yeah. I mean, something that was unimaginable 20 years ago. And, and, and now you, you have all that. We have the menace of drugs in the country. Yeah. And whichever way you make money, as long as you've made money, in Kenya you're a hero. It doesn't matter how you make it. Mm -hmm. and, and the people will be out there to, 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 to elect you. Uh, so so uh, we, we have, this country needs a new moral compass. Mm -hmm. And I think, I thought, I thought, uh, let, uh, let, let me come to something of this. Let, let, me, just yes. finish. Mm. let me just wrap it up. Uh, and, and, and I think one of those things is that I, I, I can tell you one thing for sure. I come from, I come from a medical family. Yeah. I, I have my children who are doctors. I have my, my consultants. Like he knows them. He trained them. I know them. My wife is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> my sisters, my brother, a lot of them. My immediate relatives, you know, nephews, nieces, and the rest of them. The registrars are committing suicide. Registrars are on, on, you know what a registrar? People who are specializing mm. as, as surgeons, ENT surgeons, as uh, pediatricians, as like he's a pediatrician, and, and as, as what do you call uh, gynecologists and the rest of them, who are in the university are so overwhelmed by the pressures of life. They can't even pay for, and then you have the university system right now, which is so commercialized, so commercialized. Mm. They're supposed to pay hundreds of thousands and they can't find jobs. These are doctors who are trained as doctors okay. who can't find jobs, yeah. who when they go back to the university again, the government cannot give them scholarships to study uh, and, 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 and specialize and, and yeah. certain stipends. And, and, but then and, and, and life is bad. Okay. So when you see that kind of a decay in the country, 
And then you see people who are rumored to be drug lords, be, be, being governors and flashing vehicles and flashing money in, and, and literally telling it to Kenyans, look at the kind of money I have in my house. You know what I mean? Or in my, in my, in my office. Yeah. Uh, this, this country has gone to hell. We've gone to the docks. Okay. And, 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 and that's why I think yeah. every decision that the president has got to, got to make in, in some of these areas, there has to be a serious thought into it. Okay. Yeah, All serious right. thought into it. Right, you can. I want to give yeah. the basic issue. Yeah. In all this, yeah. what he's saying, uh, well, the, 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 the structures are in the in the sub counties. Yeah. They are there. They are more, but they are, they are not working well. And see. The basic issue in life yeah. is the relationship between the power of those who govern, the people who have given to govern, at whatever level. Yeah. The relationship of that with the realities mm. of God's laws or nature. Absolutely. Because we, we disobey that all the time. Life is physical. Mm. Anything we want to provide is physical, whether it is water, whether it is roads, whether it is uh, drugs, whether it is food in agriculture, what buildings, they are physical. And they are dependent on physical laws. If you're religious, you say God's laws. Mm. If you are atheist, you say nature. nature. And there are people mm. who have studied those. Yeah. They are called professionals. Now, they know how things work mm -hmm. in nature. Then there are those who govern and put all these resources plus these people together to make these things work for the betterment of humanity or its destruction, if they so wish. Mm. Those are the governors. Now, they are, these two are duty bound to work together. Mm. So that when you have presidential directive or anything, a political statement, which means well for the welfare of the society, it must therefore be translated by these people called professionals to make it work in the world of nature. Okay. That is why I, I've been in government and I've known, and I, when we were in the government, I think back here, there's one thing that you never allowed if you are a permanent secretary or you are, you are cabinet secretary, you are minister, to make a pronouncement. Yeah if you have not gone into the details mm -hmm. of how that pronouncement will actually work. Okay. Because otherwise, you often embarrass the government. Okay. I've seen in our situation, yeah. and I'm seeing this because I meet ministers and so in committees, and they come to the assembly. Mm -hmm. You see that they tend to gloss over the technicalities of what should be done mm -hmm. and put more emphasis on the political intentions that are good, yeah. that are actually very easy to sell. Yeah. And I think that is where the issue is. Okay. I'm not in there, I don't know how it works, but I've noticed in committees, yeah. when we're dealing with cabinet secretaries, that if a president makes a decision, it is uh, a presumably, he should have had a lot of groundwork yeah. before he talks. But if the president, because the president can talk any time, and they mean well, yeah. if they say we want our people, that is what he's elected to do. It is the duty of the technical people and say, the, your excellency. The practical, yeah. the, yeah. the practicality. We, we, we can do it like this. 60 days is not possible. Yeah. So let's say 60 days, we can only do this, but the rest will do like this. And I think it behoves anybody in power, whether it's a president or a cabinet secretary yeah. or a permanent secretary, to listen to, listen to, the, experts, to yeah. the experts below them. Because these experts, yeah. their, their power is in nature and it's unforgiving. Okay. So they'll tell you, and you know what they do? And you know what they do? Yeah. Once they have said and you haven't listened, yeah. they sit back and, and they're waiting for you just to, to fall. So can that, just, uh, in my view, yeah. is I think where we need to. Oh, can you, I just butt in I, here? Yes. Mm. I'm, I'm a bit conflicted here because it's like a situation where the children, you are coming home, the children have been crying for this, 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 this. And then you give them or you want to give them and they say, oh, no, 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 maybe this is not a good idea after all. Yeah. I think let us agree. 
that the decision the president has done is in keeping with Article 174 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The counties, one of the principles of dissolution, uh, devolution, the counties are supposed to manage their own resources. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to govern their own affairs, look after their minorities, take care of their things, their right to manage their issues. Mm -hmm. And what the president is saying is that I'm employ I am uh, operationalizing Article 174. We have, in the previous administrations, the presidents have maybe done this and that and that. I made a promise that I will do it. And I want to tell you, in 60 days, we'll do it. Now, the gravity of the matter is coming now. It is a serious matter. Now, people <laughs> are getting scared. I think we should be bold enough to say we voted for devolution, we accepted devolution. If we elected bad governors, it's your problem in your county. Yeah. If you elected a good governor, you should be happy to have all these resources coming to you yeah. and the responsibilities. Okay. So I think the president is on the right direction. Okay. But uh, of course, the technicalities must be applied. But we must now start thinking. And in fact, uh, I want to use this, uh, um, this uh, platform to appeal to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. When we are electing our governors next time, maybe if we didn't do it this time, <laughs> please stop looking at your tribe, yeah. at your friendship, at your, you know, whatever rela relations. Just let us look at competencies yeah. and the capacity to deliver okay. at that level. All right. Because we are going to have a lot of resources. And if yeah. you're going okay. to elect people just because he's your cousin, he's your brother, yeah. and you know he can't uh, de you know, deliver, yeah. then it is your problem. Because 174, Article 174 says the devolution is supposed to be uh, giving you the power to decide yeah. on how to manage your resources. If you mess them up, yeah. don't start saying, oh, the other counties is developed. Oh. Ours, we, you know, that is what should go on. So as you spread your bed, so much you lie on it. Let me give you a, a very interesting example. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me see. bring in far on something here that's going on. There's yes. a proposal now mm. from Korea East Member of Parliament mm. to increase the counties. Let me 47, say, yeah. 56, there's yeah. Korea, Teso, Mount Elgo, Nispokot, Mwingi, Gucha, Suba, mm. is that, Practical is that what I, I, actually I would I would uh, propose the reverse reduce them reduce them to about fourteen maximum of <laughs> in my opinion fourteen. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we have we have limited resources. Okay. Yes. You know, you if you have um, half a million shillings today, and you want to go into a vegetable business, you want to open a restaurant, you want to. Uh, run a border border. Run a border border and uh, go into the insurance business. I mean, how does that work? Okay. This country's resources are limited. We need to pull these resources together. You see, right now, we're trying to achieve what we should have achieved constitutionally and institutionally from the beginning of pulling these, what they call, counties together into manageable so that they're able to engage in serious projects and programs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by, by the FDCs, you know what you, what you call it? We call it, yeah? The, 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 the frontier... Uh, counties now are coming together mm -hmm. to see how they can they can pull certain resources together, uh, which is even bigger than the province we had before, the eastern province. Yeah. I think we, devolution is 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 in our case, is a joke, is a serious joke. Forty-seven different units. The whole of the United States of America is only fifty what? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. And and, and it's a country of four hundred and eighty million. And they have a parliament, they have a house of representatives of 435. Mm. Mm. And so another, with another, what do you call, 100 senators. Yeah. Uh, is this 500 and, 500 and, mm. uh, 535, 35. in the case of the US. For almost 500 million population, which is 10 times ours. Yeah. And here we've got what? I don't even know the number. Three, three, Actually, three, we're running to people in, in, in the streets and they tell me, Shima, how are you fine? I said, but, but, but do I know you? He says, but you are, we're in parliament together. And I, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even know some of your own colleagues. <laughs> and, and, and I made the mis make the mistakes very often and very, very often yeah. of either greeting a staffer and telling him, Shimiwa, he's a parliamentary star. <laughs> <laughs> so there are too many. We are, we are overrepresented. We are overrepresented. Okay. Seriously overrepresented. Okay. And, and there's need to, you know, rationalize that. Mm -hmm. 
seriously rationalize that. Okay. So in, in my opinion, I think there are a lot of things we got wrong, and we must start correcting them now. Mm. Uh, by, by the central government, even taking back on a transitional period basis, the, 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 the health sector, and, and, and showing how a good health sector is managed. Mm -hmm. or, or else the central government having certain supervisory role, whereby all doctors are employed by central government, yeah. but posted to the counties. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I mean? Posted to the counties. I was speaking to Chila Yako yesterday, the yes. governor of Migori, and he vehemently opposed that proposal that you're making because he says in this situation where it's a government of shareholders, the appointments will be skewed. No, no. no okay, I get his fears, but those fears should, are misplaced. They should not even happen. You know what I mean? And we have, look, let's have a, I have a problem in this country. We see a problem and we try to solve that problem with another problem. For example, all these talks about they are coming together by partisan and the rest of it, they're good. But why do we have a, what do you call conflict every after five years? Mm -hmm. These conflicts are elections related. These conflicts arise from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the presumption or from the fact that elections can be rigged and are rigged. Yeah. So why don't we have a foolproof thing where a system which is digitalized, which of course you, know, you cannot rig. Yeah. If, if in India they cannot rig and they have the best, what do you call, uh, the, the best IT whiz kids or we, you know, wizards, you can tell, kill them, mm -hmm. in the world. Why can't you have that system in here? Okay. And then you just go there, you, you actually vote using your biometrics there, and then you vote for whoever you want, and as you keep on voting, you can see the numbers, your numbers on the screen. Yeah. You see what I mean? Mm. So by, by, by 4.35 o'clock, Yakal knows whether he's way ahead of his, of his opponent or he's trailing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to wait for three days for you to get the results. But is that a, a, a system's problem or an individual's problem? No, because the system, the system, you can buy a foolproof, you can get and procure a foolproof system. Isn't it still based on perception? If Nikal, like you're saying, is, uh, says that he's the one who's trailing, but he's the one who won, even if the figures... That, no, 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 but that's, if, of course, if you can see it on the, on, the, on the screen out there and you can see the winner, nobody, no returning officer can come out there and, and pronounce you and somebody else as a winner. Nobody can do that. Okay. You, you see what I mean? You can see them, the system is there. Even the returning officers cannot, what they call, tap into the system or interfere with it. So it's all about electoral? It's all about a proper digital electoral system which is foolproof, which we can procure. Okay. They're there in the world. Okay. People are using it in the world. All right. You, you, you see, 1.4 billion people in India, for God's sake. Yeah. 1.4 billion people in India. And you can, by afternoon, late afternoon, you can tell who is, who is ahead. Okay. You, you see what I mean? But here, we, somebody, I was reading a very interesting article the other day. Why investors will never come to Kenya. And even if they come to Kenya, they'll come with Indians or other people to come and run their systems, their businesses here. Because we, 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 we steal from the managing director to the cleaner. There is a, 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 an endemic pathological disposition towards kleptocracy. <laughs> even those ones who are not kleptocrats. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they don't have the opportunity, that's why they, they, they don't have an opportunity to steal. Yeah. Okay. Those who don't steal don't have an opportunity to steal. <laughs> but literally, everybody steals. You, you see what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm seriously talking. Everybody steals. All right. So, so if, if uh, every politician, every politician yeah. wants to rig, even those ones who are rigged, they also would want to look for an opportunity when they can rig. Yeah. You see what I mean? What I, mean eh? yeah. mm. I mean, like me and uh, my, my, my friend here, when we were in Azimio in the last election, we were hoping that the system is going to rig for us. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't hoping. <laughs> <laughs> now, really let, let, let me tell you. Yeah. You brought up and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then yes. there are always certain goodies. If they, you see, why do we have to have unrest in 1992, yeah. 1997? Only 2002 because the numbers were just too big. Yeah. I mean, everybody went into Kibaki Tosha in mm -hmm. 2002. And then 2007 to 2013, 2017, 2022. Yeah. Always the clashes. Mm -hmm. And then we say, let's talk. But we don't talk about resolving that problem of the clashes. What causes right. the clashes? All right. We don't talk about having a electoral justice.
We talk about government sharing, we know power sharing. But it's we one of the issues now, IBC reforms on both sides. They, at least they agree on that one. When, we, when we're given an opportunity to work on the IBC reform, we say we want to bring our own commissioners there. Yeah. Instead of saying we want to have a system in which no commissioner is going to be, what do you call? Uh, 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 a tamper-proof system. No, no, it's, it's going to be uh, related to any of the, the, uh, the political divides. Yeah. We say in, in, in IPPG, okay. you have your 10 commissioners there, Moi. Yeah. We also want to have 10 who are, who are basically amenable to us so that the two of the two groups can checkmate one another. Okay. And then Moi bought all the ones who are on our side. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let me bring now, let me, you, the yeah. question was uh, whether we need more counties. Yes. I think that's where the discussion yes. was. In my mind, that question has been answered by what is happening in the country. Mm -hmm. The governors themselves are saying these counties are too small. How are they saying it? They are getting regional blocks. Yes, that's the point. One, so two, three. The point is, we never in this country do things scientifically. Yeah. When some, when a certain thing is happened, what is the basic issue behind what is being done? When governors are going and saying we are forming this regional block, the Big Lake Basin block, the River Valley block. So, and they are saying so that our economy can be strong enough and survive. Yeah. That then should have been the basis of counties. Okay. So in my mind, we are saying the, region, the, 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 the desire of governors and counties to form regional blocks is indicating that the counties as we have are too small. Many and too small. Too small. But then going to the history, I wasn't there, they were both there. Actually, the number of counties, well, I don't think it was done. What we get from what happened in Bombas, people disagreed, they were to be smaller, and eventually people, by a vote or something, agreed that let's have the old count, the old districts. districts. Colonial districts. The old colonial districts I was is what became our counties. I was because people were not... This, that, that thing I say, the, Trevor, that you must look at the laws of nature when you are doing something. Yeah. When you get tired and not good and, and to, to, to go by them, mm -hmm. you get it wrong. Okay. If at, at Naivasha, they are not gotten tired or too political and went on facts and technical facts, they would have come to the, to the realization that the governors have come to now that we need bigger units. Okay. The, the, the reality of life now is yeah. you have created them, they exist, People are benefiting from it. Employments are coming. It's very hard now they want to go to add back. Them. Now, to add more. I wanted to, to weigh in. Huh? Yeah. You know, the people who are talking yeah. that we want our own uh, counties yeah. are people who are small in numbers, you know, minorities, just like me, where we come from in Tana River. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was there during the negotiations for Naivasha. And I can tell you, the initial figure was 14. Yes. Mm. That was the initial figure, that yes. we should have 14 yes. regional blocks. Then somebody said, no, no, but uh, here in Rift Valley, we are too big if we, we whatever, so let's put it to 18. Yeah. Then they increased for themselves. And then some of us sat and said, wait a minute. If it is being proposed as it is now, it would have meant Tana River, Lamu, Lamu at the end there, Tana River, and Kilifi County would form one block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would have meant that nobody from Tana River would ever have a chance, or Lamu becoming governor, or ever becoming governor, because the population in Kilifi County yes. would have swallowed all of us. Mm -hmm. None of us would have ever become a senator. None of us would ever have become. Uh, so. What would have been the difference? But would the provision of services have been better? No, no. <laughs> but because, you see, you see, no, you see. Let, let, me, yeah. let me tell you this. Yeah. Uh, I can go to the governor, call him and tell him this and this is not happening in this particular place. And he will give you an answer. A governor who is seated in Mombasa. Mombasa uh, in fact, the original ones were eight before it went to 14, and then it went to 18, and then it went to 47. Why? Because a governor who is seated in Mombasa would be... You know, at Independence, we had the eight regional governments. Mm -hmm. His mindset has very little to do with far-off counties. Mm -hmm. And that's why the counties that are making this case 
are those ones that are marginalized. And they are saying, within the same area that we are in, we are still too small. And it's the same argument I made when we were in Avasha. I said, we, it, being governed from Malindi, being governed from Mombasa, mm -hmm. is not giving us any form of devolution for those of us yeah. who know what happens on the ground. So then the guys so, 156 have a point. So then, that's the argument you So So, so there's, a, there's an argument there. There's an argument. But I wanted to say this. Yeah that if we go that direction, yeah. Yeah. you know, then Tana River County, where I come from, we will have to ask for another county mm -hmm. within Tana River County. Tana River County is very big, yeah. 37,000 square kilometers mm. for one governor to do all that job. And the minority communities, many of them feel they are left out. So I will have to also say, yes, let us amend it mm -hmm. to include another county within Tana River uh, County. Yeah. And the moment I say this, there will be another 47 mm. who mm. will be saying that. Yeah. So for me, I get the sense, I understand where they are coming from. It's the same argument we made for the 47, yeah. but it is a dangerous thing because all of us will want sub, sub, subdivisions of our counties. Yeah. We will want all new governors mm. and it is not gonna work. So if this proposition comes to the Senate, we will oppose it. Okay. Uh, many of us will oppose it. In fact, it will resurrect that whole idea of why can't we have fewer counties. And this, this is going to be counterproductive to those of us who at that time managed to get the 47. Because mm -hmm. we think that, let us work. It is not as good as we wanted, but let us work with what we have. Okay. Instead see, of now yeah. giving, opening up the opportunity for us to go back to eight regional governments. Okay. You see, you yes. see <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something, okay? The reason why we shifted from the eight to up to 14 is because a few uh, counties would be too big. Eastern is uh, just massive, all the way from the Ethiopian border, uh, the eastern, 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 pro eastern province, to down to the coast, you know, close to the coast. It's, it's too big. Uh, Rift Valley was massive also, yeah. you know, all the way from Turkana to you know, 20 or 30 kilometers from here, I don't know, 50 kilometers, how, far, how soon do you get to Naivasha here? We was going to be yeah, massive also, yeah. massive. So, so uh, we, we were doing these things based on that, or rather those of us who felt this was going to be a good idea yeah. uh, on, 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 on the expediency, as well as the service delivery. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the personal benefits and say who will lead from which community, <laughs> you see what I mean? Mm. Uh, and who is going to be the, 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 the governor of that? I don't care, even if the governor is, is a Greek who was born in, in Kenya and, and basically <laughs> has done so well for the people. You, never, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care if the governor if, if, <laughs> for, for Northeastern province is from the smallest community. So this business of trying to mix economics, politics, and development and personal interests mainly and then based on the divides that were created by the British here, or rather that were developed by the British because divide to rule was there. That is where the problem is. And I think there's need for us to get out of that. You see, today, Sakaja is the, is the, is the governor of Nairobi. Sakaja was not born in Nairobi, I think. I don't know where he was born. But, but, but he's, uh, he's from Western okay. Kenya. Was he born in Kenya? He was born in Nairobi. Okay, he, he might have been born, like, or like my children are born in Nairobi. You know, yeah. I have children who are born in Nairobi. Many of them, actually, most of them. But, but he's, he, people look at him and say, this guy can, can deliver. Okay. Kidero was a Luo. He is a Luya himself. We had a Kikuyu, what do you call a governor. Mm -hmm. We could have ended up even with a Somali. And I don't know how soon it's going to be, but you could have ended up with anybody. But so the, the issue is, let us have a detribalized the ethnicized yeah. kind of approach to development in which we look for national integration. Okay. Where a Pokomo can become, if he's born in Wajir and grew up in Wajir and lets the community out there, he can become the governor there. Okay. Now let me tell you the reason why we lost on, on, in, in Naivasha. He was there. There were two positions. Yeah. One position was devolution, but with a limited numbers of uh, uh, devolved units. Mm -hmm. The other one was opposed to it completely, completely in its entirety, which is the mountain region. Mountain region did not want any devolution, right from the beginning when we got independence. Okay. In ODM, we had a split. 
we had a split. Mm -hmm. We had a political split in parliament here yeah. because Raila was not seen to have come out in defense of the challenging young men and women who were arrested as a result of the post-election violence uh. and the position he took on the Mao forest, the Mao, what do you call it, uh, on those things and the fact that he was going to be enthroned as a Kikui elder. So basically it's like he now had a new constituency, mm -hmm. which was all a trick. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> now, now, when that base was lost, yeah. Uh, 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 we, the settlement right now was on the Rift Valley people wanted, Ruto and his group wanted the big, big, big units. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, we in ODM wanted the big units. The mountain did not want any unit. Mm -hmm. So the settlement was reached when there was now the conspiracy shifted to the beginning of the, of the formation of Jubilee. Okay. When Uhuru and Ruto now came together mm -hmm. is when the Rift Valley block said, okay, Let's go for this and let's go for the pure presidential system because okay. Raila and ourselves in ODM those days, yeah. we wanted to go for the parliamentary system. Okay. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so what I'm basically trying to say is that the moment, the constitutional moment mm -hmm. and the moment for this country was subsumed by the personal interests mm. of the political actors of the day. Okay. Now, I don't want us to go the same direction again now. Right now, there's a political crisis. Yeah. You get my point? It, we, we, we have to look for a system, yeah. constitutional changes, including uh, adapting a parliamentary system of government yeah. from this period what you call presidential system where the cabinet ministers are outside there, they are not responsible to anybody. Yeah. Although these days they occasionally appear in parliament to answer questions, we want a, parliament, a government that comes from parliament. Okay. And, 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 and all the things to do with devolution itself and all the rest of it, in my opinion, mm -hmm. The, that debate should be reopened now through this. This is an opportunity for us to, to do fundamental changes in this country's future for posterity. All right. Let me bring in some feedback. There's a lot of feedback coming through, and then we close this discussion. And Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya use the hashtag Daybreak. Let's bring that up. There's a lot. And the people, of course, the sovereign power belongs to the people. So let's hear what they have to say. Let's bring that up on the screen and see. Okango says we don't need more counties. Devolved corruption. Instead, we should reduce the number of counties and increase the number of wards to ensure fast and reasonable access to the devolved services in all parts mm. of the republic, okay? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the engineer Nazaro says, Honorable Mandago case isn't an isolated one. All former and current county chiefs should be properly audited. It seems there's a huge gap between EACC and political correctness of the county chiefs of the day, okay? Ken Yaminde says, if we reason like Senator Mungatana, then we might as well scrap off retirement age for civil servants. The main reason why politicians don't want to retire is to safeguard their ill-gotten wealth and amass more. Okay? Honorable Lillian CEO, he says, the national government has made commitment for timely disbursement of equitable share of revenue to the county government, fast track transfer of all pending devolved functions, and seek alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. Okay? Sawe says, in Kenya, a recurring issue is our tendency to choose leaders who gain prominence through corruption rather than selecting capable individuals. Our focus on six-piece suit often results in electing party loyalists who may lack competence. Brian Chemwa says, devolution in Kenya has brought significant progress, but it has faced challenges by the same people who are leading them, including corruption and equal distribution of resources among counties and inadequate capacity building for counties. Boya Odiambo says, can he tell Honorable Mungatana that his suggestion can only work where there is political discipline and people are honorable enough to accept responsibilities of their actions or inactions, resign or step aside? In our case, I'm afraid we must legislate. Babu Michael says, there's an issue that the president talked about during the devolution conference yesterday, that counties should formulate ways to raise their own revenues and not depend fully on the shared revenue. I believe that's what you wanted to say. Mm. Wes says, governors running for other offices after mandatory two terms should be discouraged. Mandago could even train athletes. <laughs> Former Ugandan president, the late Joe Naise, <laughs> went back to the university to lecture after he was toppled. <laughs> Kipto Ruto says, tackling the pervasive issue of corruption within counties is an imperative stride towards fostering the efficacy of devolution. Collaborative efforts can pave the way for a more accountable and efficient framework of county governance. Don uh, Dombori says, to ensure a level playing field, former governors considering legislative roles should wait until their tenure audits receive an unqualified opinion. Let's eliminate potential conflicts of interest and uphold the integrity of our democratic process. 
Okelo okay, Mwalimu says Finland scholarship saga is a prima facie evidence of professional misconduct and an unnecessary extension of political bad manners. Even though the case is active before the court, those involved must refund all the money swindled from unsuspecting parents and apologize to them. All right, we've run out of time here. That's where we leave the State of the Nation conversation. Honorable Farah Malim, the DAB Member of Parliament, Honorable Danson Mungatana, Senator Tana Riva, and Honorable James Jikal, Seme Member of Parliament. Thank you so much for making time this morning. I believe we'll have time again to talk about the conversations on the dialogue team in just a bit. All right, so bye for now. It's time for Cooking Tips coming up next.